I live in New York. I love this city. It is a great city. We are a progressive city. We have eliminated both cars and English. It's great. But I hate when people do this when they go, New York City, eight million people, eight million stories. There's three New York stories, all right? There's, I moved here, I lived here all my life, and Ghostbusters. I, uh, so I, I, I lived in Seattle, and then I moved to New York, and when I moved to New York, I made a big mistake because I brought my girlfriend from Seattle to New York. And I don't know if you guys knew this, New York already has girlfriends. You <laughs> don't need to bring a girlfriend there. They got it covered. They got it all covered. <laughs> bringing a girlfriend to New York is like bringing a warm beer to a bar that serves free cold beers. <laughs> and everybody's just spilling cold beer all over the place, and you have to sit there and pretend like you love warm beer. You're like, <laughs> thanks, I brought my own. I wish there would have been a bouncer at the door to New York that was like, hey, you can't bring that in here. There's girlfriends inside. I, um, I learned this when I lived in New York. I learned that models are not attractive. I don't know if you guys knew that. I lived in the Lower East Side of New York and there's like models there, like there's deers in the forest. You know what I mean? You're like, model, uh, be, be quiet. Uh, no, but the thing is, is that we all think that models are like really attractive because we see them in like a magazine or like on a runway and there's like a team of robots that put them together. But when you see like a model on like a Sunday morning at 8 a.m., it just looks like a really tall, tired little boy. <laughs> like, a, like they're all malnourished and clumsy. They're like brand new avatars. They're kind of like wobbly. <laughs> Be careful, if they fall on you, they're pointy. <laughs> you can't get a model to eat out of your hand though. You just have to have cocaine and money. <laughs> Very glad to be here. I, uh, I moved to New York two years ago, and I moved straight into the hood. And I'd always heard the stereotype of white people in the hood is they think we're all cops. And I didn't want my neighbors to think that I was a cop. So when I first moved in, I was just walking around smoking weed on the street. <laughs> but it wasn't really that effective. Because one day I walked past this kid's stoop and just heard him say to his friend, yo, that cop smokes weed, son. <laughs> The city is perfect, by the way. This is the most perfect city. I went to the CVS to get hair care product, and I saw the largest black hair care section in my life. I was just sitting there like, did I die and go to black heaven? I do not want to leave this place. <laughs> uh, it's so awesome to be in New York. This is where I live, this is my home. Um, I love it here, thank you, you're very impressed. Um, <laughs> I was walking down the street the other day and I saw a woman fall on the street. She was totally fine, we can laugh about it. <laughs> and she was walking towards me and she tripped and she fell, but there was nothing in front of her. And it looked like she knew she was gonna trip before she did. She was walking and she was like, oh, oh no, oh, oh, oh. And this is how jaded I am as a New Yorker. When she fell, my first reaction, I swear to God, was, this woman is trying to rob me. A hundred percent. I was like, I know how this works. She pretends to fall. I reach down to help her. She takes my wallet. A gypsy drives up on a Vespa, steals my baby. So I helped her, but from like three feet away. I was like, here, give me your hand. Let me see both your hands. <laughs> Another thing I've discovered about people in New York is that people in New York are terrible with their money. I saw a girl in a store the other day and she was holding a little designer dress and she was like, oh, I can't afford this. I better put it on my credit card. <laughs> I was like, you know where else you could put it? Back on the f***ing rack. People just use credit cards like they're gift certificates. 
And now they have credit cards, you don't even have to swipe anymore. You can just wave them at stuff, like, wee. <laughs> just like they're little tiny magic wands, like, hi, I bought that. <laughs> bought that too. What's that, can you ring me up? Too late, I already bought it. I'm kind of poor, like I live in a horrible apartment. And uh, I feel like the only, like I live in New York and so it's really expensive there. And I feel like the only way to be happy there is just if you just make your taste match your budget. Do you guys ever do that? Where you're like, oh my God, I love business carpet in my apartment. I love watching movies on YouTube. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> But I want to move out of my apartment right now because I have a broken window and I email my landlord to come fix it. And then he was like, I'll be on that ASAP. And it's been over two months now and he still hasn't fixed it. So I think he thinks ASAP means actually, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but when I lived in New York, it was much more like that movie, The Warriors. There were just clowns on roller skates who would come by and mimes wrapped up in barbed wire. <laughs> all of Tompkins Square Park was just on fire all the time. <laughs> so I sold out and I, I moved to Los Angeles. I still have one, some remnants of my New York life. Like my son found a peep show token from the Show World Center <laughs> in my, my coin collection. It's got a little naked lady on it. That's how you could tell. And he said, Daddy, what kind of money is this? And I said, son, that's not money. That's treasure. <laughs> but so, so I was in New York over the, the winter. I was back here and it was one of those days that the, the snow had just started to fall a little bit and I was walking through the meatpacking district and it was just a crisp night and perfect snowflakes were starting to fall all around me. And I was looking down at the cobblestone and I just was so moved. I started to feel these incredible feelings for New York. And I thought, these are the same cobblestones that like Brendan Behan walked across and stumbled across and Edgar Allan Poe sat on this stoop one time. And, and you, you look at New York and it's been here forever and you start to feel like this connection you have with the city and the cobblestones and the doorways, you're like, Maybe because I'm connected to this city, like, we're both kind of eternal because the city goes on forever. It's always going to be here. It's so amazing. And I, this is immediately when I think, you know what? That's it. I'm moving back to New York City. Precisely as I formed that thought in my head <laughs> is when the five morbidly obese boys in full Mets outfits <laughs> jump out around the corner and they start pretending to stab me to death. <laughs> the ringleader of this merry band starts to stab me going, what's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? <laughs> and I thought, oh yeah, there's that New York I know. <laughs> Young gang out on the town pretending to stab a passerby to death. <laughs> and here's what I'll tell you, on a snowy night in New York City, to your brain, the difference between someone stabbing you to death and someone pretending to stab you to death <laughs> is marginal. <laughs> and either way, you let out a little bit of pee. Oh, I'm so glad to be back in the South where people are real. Oh, and the men are beautiful. Yes. Because I was forced to move to New York because of success. And I hate that place. I hate that place. I hate that place. I hate it. I hate it, okay? You're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say you hate New York. Because people will go, what do you mean you hate New York? It's the greatest city on earth. <laughs> what? And they always do it the same way. They always look slightly off to the side like a cult member. It's the greatest city on earth. <laughs> what? Where'd you go? I'm right here. What happened? Is de Blasio paying you? What's going on? <laughs> I hate that place. 
It's a Yankee trash heap. I hate it. <laughs> this is my purpose in life. This is my ministry to tell you. It's horrible. Because when they say to you, it's the greatest city on earth, I go prove it. Like, oh, uh, the museums, what? The museums, the, muse the museums are amazing. You can go to a museum every day. I can't go to no museum every day, I got a job. Well, well the restaurants, the restaurants are amazing. I can't go to your fancy restaurants to quit my job to go to museums. And it's so cold. It's so cold. And just to know something about me, just emotionally, spiritually, genetically, historically, I'm never supposed to be cold. So to live somewhere that like, gets so cold. Like last year it snowed, there was a blizzard, but they called it a bomb cyclone. A cyclone is a hurricane in the South Pacific and a bomb is a damn bomb. <laughs> Why are we all of a sudden confused as to what's happening out here? So it happened on a Wednesday and they told me I still had to go to work. Wait a minute. There's frozen on the water on the ground. Jesus don't want me to go to work. <laughs> Why I got to do this? What are you talking about, okay? And they're like, oh, you can still take the train. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. It was seven degrees outside. As the high. Those were all the degrees we was gonna get that day. And you want me to get on this train? I live where the above ground train is. I don't know what these frigid temperatures would do to rail lines. I was a theater major, not an engineer. So I get on this frozen train and it jumps the tracks and all of a sudden I'm in a Final Destination movie. Absolutely not. So I was like, fine, I'll take a car. And I was standing outside in the seven degrees freezing my eggs. <laughs> trying to get to work and I snapped because it was seven degrees outside, but the sun was out. <laughs> mocking me. <laughs> like a lamp in the damn sky. <laughs> and I snapped, I just looked up and I like, I get a billion degrees, you can't give me 50, go to hell! And I was like, you know what? Then I realized I was a black lady in a white neighborhood yelling at the sun. <laughs> like, you know what, let me go inside. Cause if you call the cops on me, I earned it. I earned it. I live in New York City. My grandfather uh, moved there from Ireland in 1920. His name was Florence McCarthy. And they used to beat him up cause his name was Florence. <laughs> but people don't understand my grandfather came over here in 1920, no job, no money, no friends. Nothing but a piece of disease, potato on his lip, a Pap's blue ribbon in his hand, and a dream in his heart. He wanted to be a figure skater. He was a moron. But he and my grandmother managed to crank out 167 children in just under 15 years. Years after, he was castrated in a horrible industrial accident. She continued having kids, just out of habit. Black kids, white kids, Chinese kids. We don't know how she did it. We know how she did it. We don't like to talk about it. I live in New York City, which I love. I think this is the greatest city in the entire world, I have to say. Um, it is. Is it not the best? And the people watching here is so incredible. Can I just say one thing? I, um, for Ash Wednesday, did you celebrate the Ash Wednesday? All right, it was very strange this year. I remember um, when I was a kid, all my Catholic friends, they would have like a little, you know, a little ash here, and it was, you know, I'd be like, oh, it's Ash Wednesday. This year, I, they must have had an excess of ashes or something. <laughs> Huge ax over here. We've got Jesus, Mary Joseph, Jerusalem, the Pope. I mean, it was unbelievable. Then I saw this guy walking down the street, and I looked at his head, and I said, oh, he has ashes. And then I looked a little closer. I realized part of his forehead had been removed for some reason, and it was a shadow. It was so and I thought, this is probably his happiest day of the year, you know, that he can just walk. <laughs> No, but I, just, I love New York City. I just love the city. And I live in the greatest neighborhood. I have a great, I know all the people in my building. I mean, my next door neighbor's name is Marjorie. Everyone's like really friendly in the building. Now, several years ago, I leave my apartment, go to my agent's office, call my mother on the phone because it's free. We're chit-chatting. <laughs> We're chit-chatting away and my elbow hits the phone and we get disconnected. Just 
just by mistake, we just get disconnected right in the middle of the conversation. I didn't call her back right away. And I neglected to tell her I'd been calling from my agent's office. She is completely paranoid. She thinks something happened to me in my apartment and that's why we got disconnected. When I got home, this was the message she left on my answering machine. It's a real message from my mother. She's completely out of her mind. Judith, are you all right? Did you fall down? What happened? Where are you? I'm a wreck. I don't understand this. Maybe I'll call Marjorie and tell her to go over and find out. <laughs> Judith, where are you? All right, here's the clincher, Ronnie. So long. <laughs> what? What is that so long? Oh my God, it is so good to be back in New York. I lived here for six years, and then I moved away. And did you guys know you can do that? <laughs> There's uh, other cities you can live in. <laughs> and in some of them, they let you control the temperature of your own apartment. Did you guys know that? <laughs> you decide, you just punch a button. You don't have to wait for a guy you've never met to finally turn the radiator on so you can be too hot all winter. It's great. <laughs> There's whole cities where your landlord is a person and not a feral cat. Did you guys know that? It's insane. My landlord here was Lenny. He was an orange tabby. And he only had one eye. I'm not positive he was my landlord, but I was scared of him, so I just put money in his bowl once a month. And But here's the thing, I'm talking shit, I keep coming back. That's the thing about New York City, you can't ever really leave. Because really, living in New York City is like being in an abusive relationship. That's really what it is. You just keep, it just beats the shit out of you. And then finally one day you're like, you know what? I've had enough of this New York City. I deserve better. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. And then New York City puts Molly in your beer and sucks your dick in a cab. And you're like, great! And York's like, that's right, bitch, tell him I'm the best or I'll put more dead rats in the wall. It's like, okay, you're the best. I remember growing up in New York, I used to think everybody loved New Yorkers. And then I started to travel and I found out nobody loves New Yorkers. People hate us. I didn't know this. They don't like us. They think we're rude. They think we're arrogant. I think we're misunderstood. New Yorkers are not rude. It's just, we deal with so many weirdos on a daily basis, it's hard for us to care about what the rest of the country cares about. Like, they don't live like us. You know? Like, there's places in this country right now where people are arguing about gender pronouns. How stupid is that? People will argue with you about how you ask them to address you. In New York, nobody's arguing about that. Because we've been dealing with people thinking they're a different person our entire lives. <laughs> You want me to call you they? I'll call you they. There's a crackhead in my neighborhood I gotta call Beyonce. <laughs> That's what he go by. He used to be Henry. One day he changed it. No warning. We was like, good morning, Henry. He was like, nigga, it's Beyonce. <laughs> then he pulled his dick out, started peeing on the bus. <laughs> And we respected it. We was like, oh, lemonade. Okay, we got it. <laughs> we don't got time to argue with you. We got to go to work. I used to live in New York. Has anyone here ever lived in New York? Yeah, yeah what a piece of shit place. <laughs> People were like, best city on earth. I'm like, yeah, to see a stranger's dick, maybe. Like, and specifically to see a stranger's dick you didn't want to see because... Sometimes you'll see a stranger's dick and be like, ooh. <laughs> I kind of spiced up my commute. Uh, I remember the first stranger's dick I didn't want to see. Yeah, that's a children's book I'm working on. <laughs> Teaches kids about colors and shapes. It's like, wow, okay. <laughs> 
is called Me Too. Um, I come from a part of New York that it's the worst place. It's called a Staten Island. I don't know if you guys heard about it. See, you guys, some of you guys are laughing. Yeah, it's bad. It should be renamed, ugh, because that's how it makes you feel on the inside. That's how it makes you feel. Let, I'm going to tell you a fact about Staten Island you might not know. Staten Island is the only place in New York City where you have to take a boat to get to the city. That's horrible. That's, it affects you mentally. Because when you take a boat to the city every day, you end up talking like a pirate, whether you want to or not. <laughs> Say some pirate shit and all your friends stop hanging out with you. You'd be like, yo, Christian, I just saw the trailer for Amazing Spider-Man 2. It looks crazy. Times Square, I got the tickets, are you down? And I'm like, I would love to if the seas allow. He's like, this guy doesn't say if the seas allow? Another little known fact, uh, like two months ago, there was a guy dressing up as a clown in Staten Island, and he was like, at night, he would pop out and terrorize people. That's the goofy things I'm dealing with in Staten Island. Like, I've had to say sentences that I'm not proud of saying. I'm like, guys, I have to take a boat, and if, if I don't get home in time, the clown is gonna catch me. Like, I've said that, and I'm like, <laughs> New York is crazy, man! Not only is it the best city in the world, this is also the scam capital of the world. The scam capital of the world. <laughs> scam capital. I got here last week, got here last week, got back last week. Ran to a guy on the subway, man. He said, hey, man, I want to buy some, circus, some tickets to the circus. I'm saying to myself, hey, 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 you know, tickets to the circus. I said, man, are these tickets legit? Are these tickets legit? <laughs> Cause this is a pencil. Is this legit? <laughs> and you spell circus with a K. Is this legit? Here in Manhattan, a uh, very nice neighborhood, very nice building, but I happen to be the only one under 60 and not Jewish in my building. Shalom. Um, which is cool, that's cool, but everyone thinks I'm a Jamaican nanny. How did that happen? And I don't like when people make assumptions about me, you know what I'm saying? Just because they might smell a little weed coming out of my apartment. Because <laughs> you know. <laughs> or because I carry around a little white baby in my knapsack. <laughs> Shoot, I am broke and little white babies are good money. <laughs> Who said it? I said it! I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I want to share a story with you. This is the weirdest thing. I've ever dealt with in one of my walks in Brooklyn. I was walking around my neighborhood and I saw a black woman pushing a stroller with a white baby in it. And that's not all that surprising, right? Especially in certain parts of New York. It's fair to assume that that's the nanny and that's the child she's taken care of. Now, it's possible that that child is that woman's partner's child from a previous relationship. That's certainly possible, right? Another possibility, genetics are very complicated. Maybe that was her child. The child is much lighter. You know, but the child had blonde hair and blue eyes. I didn't think so. But look, genetics is complicated. Maybe that was her child, right? Now there's a third possibility, which is the least likely possibility, but that's the possibility I really want it to be. And that possibility is that this is a rich black woman who just bought herself <laughs> the ultimate luxury item. Now I'm trying to walk by these two people on the street when I overhear what this black woman is saying to this white child. And this is what she's saying. Toby, your name is Toby. Can you say it? That's your name. Your name is Toby. Say it. Your name is Toby. Okay, that's, okay, that's about, about 30 of you. About 30 of you understood. You should be proud. For the rest of you, I will explain. There is a book slash miniseries by Alex Haley called Roots. And in Roots, a slave Kunta Kinte is brought to America and is told his name is Toby. And he refuses to be called Toby, so he's whipped repeatedly. Your name is Toby, Kunta Kinte, whip. Toby, Kunta Kinte, whip. And it's absolutely horrific. Flash forward to a year ago in my neighborhood in Brooklyn. I saw a black woman tell a white child that his name was Toby. And there was no one else there to witness this. It was just me. I'm like this the whole time. Oh my God, this is amazing. Wow, what the, wow. Wow, I, I have been in a writing slump. This is perfect right now. Now there's two possibilities how this could have happened, right? 
One possibility is that this black woman has also not seen or read Roots, has no idea why this is magical. <laughs> or the second possibility, this black woman just found a revenge for slavery. I'm from East New York, Brooklyn. That is not the appropriate response. For those of you that haven't been to East New York before, keep it that way. You're doing great. You are making better life choices than I do. East New York is not the safest of neighborhoods. People don't want to be outside that long, so we've developed really efficient shopping. You know? Like I went into a store last week, same store. I bought a raw chicken, a baseball glove, and a used air conditioner. I went in for a t-shirt. Like I didn't get what I wanted, but I got what I needed. I'm a landlord in East New York. That is also not the appropriate response for that. <laughs> While back, I was driving up to one of my buildings. When I got out the car, this white lady walked up to me and she asked me for directions. <laughs> like in front of everybody. I can't have that, it's gonna ruin my street cred, you know? I can't be so safe that I'm white people approachable. <laughs> In East New York, that's a problem for me. I got hood tenants. They're not gonna pay me rent if they think my friends crochet. <laughs> it didn't bother me at first, but there was a crossing guard. There was a cop, like she chose me. <laughs> she looked around and said, nah, you're the safest option. <laughs> so she was like, excuse me. I was like, no, excuse me. <laughs> Why did you ask me for directions? And she was like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I just noticed in the back of your car, you had two car seats. I didn't think you were that dangerous. Apparently, gangsters don't care about child safety. <laughs> if that's a rumor in the white community, I'm here to dispel that today. <laughs> just so y'all know, my kids will get to class, but I still might shoot you. 